hopefully you're taking the film because there's something about it you really want to do. You know, you, you have to do it for something, something that's going to keep you getting up at a god-awful early call time or standing up for 16 hours. And something's going to keep you going, you know. And, and uh, that's what I ask myself. Because I think films are hard to make. They're really hard to make, and it takes a lot out of you. But I think that uh, uh, complacency and comfort is not, has nothing to do with our business, not, not as technicians. My name is Matthew Libatique, and I am a cinematographer. I started becoming interested in films because uh, the camera, really. I don't know, something about the camera just really attracted me. In undergraduate school, I, I saw Do the Right Thing. It was like a mind explosion, like a possibility. It was the first time I ever saw a film that made it feel like it was possible for a person like me to make films. Spike, for me, was at the forefront because as a minority, I just felt it. And it still continues to have that same influence over me, is that kind of social consciousness. When I was becoming interested in filmmaking in undergrad, I didn't study film. It was in sociology and communications. The one camera they had was an RES, and it had a variable speed motor on it. And I remember shooting. I had this idea that I wanted to make these little tiny movies about uh, petty crimes. The variable speed motor was set to reverse once. So when I got the footage back, I had double exposed everything. And then I, I, I looked at it, and it was a complete and utter fuck-up on my part. But then I was just sort of inspired by the mistake, and I tried to, re, you know, re, and on, on subsequent shootings, I tried to re, keep re, reproducing it. You know, that's the only camera I know that has a reverse motor, though, with that little motor on it. And I kept, you know, trying it over and over again. Because like, it was perfect when I did it by mistake. But I was trying to repeat the findings. It was just too scientific. I always look back on that moment, and I say, you know, I've kind of made a career out of those mistakes working out. <laughs> the thing that's really stuck with me throughout my career is the uh, impact of reflective light. Because I would light something and I thought I was lighting it the same way, but it was a different kind of re reflectivity. And when you're dealing with reversal film, you're dealing with you know the short latitude. So reflectivity actually contributes to how much brighter you are in your highs or how low you are in your lows. So all of a sudden, I was just using a reflective meter. And I've been using a reflective meter my entire career until this digital revolution. And even so, I use a, a waveform that gives me a reflective reading of somebody's skin tone because that's the only way I know how to expose anything. The reason I was attracted to Black Swan, it wasn't because I was attracted to Black Swan. Darren Aronofsky and I had come off of the fountain where we actually had a pretty rocky relationship on. But it was just about reconnecting with an old friend, really. And when we started to prep that film, it was all about trying not to make it suck. You know, because it was a genre movie. And, I, you know, there's some, there is a stigma to genre movies is that how far can they really go? You know, there have been great ones through the test of time. But it was one of the most freeing experiences I've had. All the pressures we had when we worked together before of trying to make a great film went away. At the time, to be honest, it was because Darren was in a moment where he wanted to strip everything down. He didn't want 35 millimeter anymore. Digital was still in its infancy, and he didn't trust it. And for him, 16 millimeter allowed him to have a 1,000 foot mag on a 400 foot mag and have it on somebody's shoulder like he did on The Wrestler. He loves the grain. He said to me, the more grain, the better. And uh, that's what he wanted to put out in the world. That's how he wanted his story to be articulated visually. There's an abundance of uh, ways to shoot a film. Like getting gear is not a problem. Lighting, you know, the sun comes out every day and you have light. Where you have light, you have shadows. All that's taken care of. It's content. In this world, because we have so many people who are trying to make films, being uh, original is also really difficult. So you have to, you know, you, you got to go the extra mile in terms of trying to uh, be inspired. I think as a filmmaker or as an artist in general. Like uh, the things you believe in, the things that move you, the things that make you click and things that make you inspired or angry or happy, all those things should go into your content or else you have nothing to shoot. You really have to go with a, a kind of an abandon when, you, when, you, when you're trying to uh, create something special.